Hello, this is my first hard surface practice session. So on the screen at the moment I'm just blocking out a shape, seeing if I can find something I like the look of. Uh, there's no real goal in mind here, I'm just going to model and see what it develops into. Uh, so this is just basic modeling, uh, pulling, extruding, uh, moving and rotating objects around. Uh, here just beveling the edges at the back. Here I'm inserting some faces to establish the curvature for the bevel at the back and then round the sides um, indenting a second inset just to make a, the form a bit more interesting. Here I'm switching into top view uh, and using the knife tool with angle constraints and cut through, um, just fixing up the geometry to keep everything quads. You don't have to do this if it's not deforming in any way, but it's just my preferred way of doing it. adding an extra edge loop and using um, press E to make it even and then you can flip the direction that it's um, making it even to so it's one side or the other. I feel like this is looking like uh, some sort of stand or display. You know like in films when you get a sci-fi movie um, and they've got like a museum uh, with a stand showing what like a, like a tree used to look like or something like that. Uh, just inserting panels. Uh, this front piece should have an inset for some sort of panel or plaque uh, or some sort of information display saying what the stand is showing. Also kind of looks a little bit like a dodgem. Can we extrude these up, uh, just change up the shape of the frame a little bit. Okay, now I'm adding uh, a subdivision modifier set to simple and another set to Catmull Clark, both with two subdivisions and shading the model smooth. Uh, this is just to check what it looks like and having a good look around. Uh, here I turned off cavity in the viewport display um, so that I could see, see the model better. Uh, that panel on the front needed an extra inset just to, just to keep the um, sub D crisp. Like I say, there's no real specific goal in mind with this, it's just sort of playing around, seeing what shapes look good, seeing if it turns into something uh, usable, and just practicing the, the techniques. Just extruding and snapping. Just 
actually easier to bridge and then insert loops and snap them into place. And then here I'm in, uh, beveling in, the, in this face um, just to give it some extra geometry so I can add in a little raised up portion in the middle. I'm adding two um, edge loops around the rim of the frame um, and what I'm going to do is basically inset a a seal, I suppose you'd call it, around part of the back and sides. Um, I'm going to have that sort of set inwards and then I'm going to duplicate the faces and raise it up so it's got a sort of back and sides surround on the frame. Uh, before I get to that, I'm going to add some extra edge loops just to fix up the rounding caused by the subdivision modifiers just on this end piece. Again, using even thickness to make sure they're nice and straight. So yeah, duplicate selection and separate. And then select the other piece and extrude it up on the z-axis. Scale zero on the z-axis. And give it some height. Makes it look much more like a booth and less like a dodgem. Uh, here I'm just fixing up the shading. Um, don't really need the sub-D modifiers on this piece. Uh, but I'll add some edge, edge loops just to, just in case I'd need to add them back later for any reason. Moving forward a bit, um, this is basically adding a top to it. I've basically duplicated the bottom piece, uh, scale minus one on the z-axis, and then I'm going to snap it into place on the top of the kind of the glass frame at the back. Um, I'm not too worried about the intersecting in the in the panel there. It's not exactly even. Here I'm adding an extra edge loop just to fix up the way the sub D is doing the what would be the bottom of the model, uh, removing the front panel um, and uh, snapping that back to being straight just so it looks vi uh, visually different from the bottom piece. Uh, here I was playing around considering moving that forward but I decided against it. Uh, moving forward again, just looking around the model, seeing what else we can add or change. Often when you're modelling like this, you notice things that you weren't looking at the first time around. Um, I've got two materials set up with uh, bevel modifiers, uh, which is actually the wrong workflow. I'm actually mixing two workflows up here. Um, the sub-D workflow and the bevel workflow are very different and... They both achieve good results, but if you use them both at the same time, you end up with what happened to me happening and a blender crashed because it can't compute um, that much information. It's, it's too much geometry for it to, to work out and render. Here I'm just fixing up where the sub-D modifier is um, curving that corner a little bit too much and making it lift up out of the, the frame at the bottom. Incidentally, the re uh, the reason the thumbnail for this video looks so bad is because it's a still from the video, um, because Blender crashed and I lost all the work. Which is another tip: always save your work. Here I'm adjusting the frame again, um, just bridging the faces to. Um, basically make it look more like the frame is holding the glass rather than the glass is holding up the frame. Um, happy accident that I've got the right amount of loop cuts there. 
which just makes a nice end piece. Uh, do the same on the other side. I could have mirrored this, but I didn't want to redo that front panel. And then I just need to add some loop cuts just to um, stop the rounding at the top there from the sub D modifier. Uh, yeah, just going to change up the the roof of this thing a little bit just to make it again visually different from the the piece at the bottom. Uh, so just extruding this twice and then scaling in the top extrusion. Yeah, just inserting a small panel into uh, that front piece. Okay, moving forward a fair bit now. Um, here I duplicated these faces at the front and moved them forward. And basically what I'm going to do is use them to make a kind of grid or gauze or metal wire mesh thing um, that sits in front, kind of like a vent. Um, so I'm just adding loop cuts because uh, I need more geometry here. And then here you use the poke faces um, option just to get the diamond pattern. And then I'm going to basically dissolve the edges that we don't need, which is all the vertical and horizontal ones, not the ones around the uh, the outside, so they will stay anyway. Uh, the next step is to basically select all the um, diagonal edges and separate them. Not quite as I've done here, because I'll have to go back in a second, because that's done the faces as well. Um, I forgot there is actually a delete faces only option um, that I remembered after the fact. Um, but here I went back and basically did them separate and did all the lines going one way, then all the lines going the other way, and then joined them together afterwards. So I'm se se uh, se separating those from this part of the mesh. That's one, and then all the ones the other direction. We can delete the back piece because I don't need it anymore. And we're just left with the wireframe. Join both those together. It's not joining for some reason. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to convert that to a curve. And then because it's a curve, um, you can give it some thickness, uh, which I'm using the wrong slider in the geometry thing there. It's actually the uh, depth underneath that does the radius. Um, so we don't need a big radius here because it's a very small part. Uh, so we're going for five millimeters, I think that is, or half a millimeter. Normally, if this was a, a model I was working on, I would have sort of set up a, a, a some sort of size reference, um, so the scale was actually um, made sense. Uh, that's it. I've just added um, Shade Smooth on top and you can convert that back to a mesh. And that's it. Thank you for watching.